So you're thinking of buying a home here in Florida. Maybe you're finally ready to pick up that vacation or investment home, or maybe you're just sick and tired of the weather or being relocated for work. Well, in today's video, we're gonna break down just how much the average home is gonna cost you in some of the most popular Florida metros. Areas like Orlando, Tampa, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Jacksonville, Pensacola, and Naples, just to name a few. And we're gonna get into it right now. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group. And we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the Tampa and Sarasota areas. As a matter of fact, we help people buy and sell all over Florida. We also make videos that are all things Tampa Bay, what it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. So if you're into that sort of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. All right, so you're thinking about buying a home here in Florida, and maybe you haven't decided what area is gonna be best for you. Now, here's the first thing I want you to know. That's not uncommon. And I know this from experience. A little over five years ago, my wife and myself decided we were going to pack up our family and make the move to Florida. And we weren't really settled on what area it was gonna be. We thought we were gonna live in the Port St. Lucie Stewart area because that's where my father-in-law lives. We had been visiting there for 10 years. It just made sense to us. But for some reason, we weren't settled. So I went over to Dr. Google like any husband would <laughs> and uh, start asking all the questions. And I started doing my research. Now, this was prior to the time when we had videos like this to help us through the process. But I jumped on Google and started asking questions about population age of the population, you know, employment, um, uh, unemployment, you know, what's driving the economy. I was asking all the questions because if we're going to pack our family up, move away from our primary business source, and I was selling real estate in Detroit, and I still am. I have a team up there as well. But that was where all our income was coming from. And to, to make the move 1,200 miles away from home, that's a scary thought. So I wanted to make sure that we were thinking through it the correct way. And if we were going to make this move, we had to make it a reality. And we wanted to have no regret. At the time we moved down, we had just had a new baby. I have two, uh, my oldest now is 10. I have an eight year old and Cora now is five years old. When we moved down, she was like eight months. So like we had a lot to consider and we love the ocean. We're water babies. You might not be, you know, you might be a park person and Orlando is really attractive to you. These are questions that you're going to want to get answered before you make a decision about where to purchase a property, right? If you're an investor looking at the areas that are, that are driving, you know, heavy tourism that are attractive to, you know, seasonal renters, those things are very important important. If it's a vacation home, are you coming down just to get out of the cold weather up north? Or are you coming down to enjoy, you know, a beach community? Uh, are you a boater? All of these things are so important to ask yourself. So make sure you're doing some diligence there. And that's why we make videos like this is to help people. I did not have this resource. And when I got here, I really wanted to learn my city. So what I did is I took a camera with me, started sharing it with audiences like you. And what I found out was that this was necessary and people really enjoyed it. So we keep doing this and I really like doing it. So today's video is sharing some of that experience. I shared how we kind of did our research. I've done a whole video going way deeper on how to do that, you know, crime rates and schools, and I did all of those. But today I want to talk about what it's actually going to cost you to purchase a home here in Florida. Because let me tell you, <laughs> it, it was very inexpensive in my mind when we moved down. I thought we got a steal. We moved it. We ended up choosing Tampa, by the way, uh, for lots of reasons. Um, I'd you know, we've told our story many times, but at the end of the day, we're beach babies and a Gulf Coast beach with white sugar sand. There is nothing like it. The sunsets there are absolutely incredible. And one of the biggest factors and determinations for us was the water over here isn't as aggressive as it is on the ocean side and the Atlantic side of Florida. So that was a major determining factor. And we wanted sunsets, not sunrises. So again, this is us. You choose you. You do you, boo, right? That's what everybody says. So I think it's important to kind of keep your mind um, wrapped on what is important to you. What does your ideal lifestyle look like? 
So I wanna get into the numbers though, because one of the things that happens is, you know, we've been so blessed because of this YouTube channel. We have somewhere between 40 and 50 families reach out to us or, or uh, individuals every single month and ask us to help them try to make their dream a reality. Moving to the Tampa Bay or Sarasota areas. And I love doing videos like this, but what I really like is listening to what your goals and dreams are and uh, helping understand that because I gotta be honest with you, not everybody who calls us is a good fit for Tampa. Some people are a much better fit in areas like Pensacola or Jacksonville. You know, some people are very limited by their budgets, other people aren't. And you know, this is why I wanted to make this video because when it comes to Florida, not only is it diverse in the population, it is diverse in the real estate you can purchase. And we're gonna go based around median numbers today. And I, forgive me for getting long-winded here, but it's so important to understand what that actually means. There's a huge difference between the median median and the average. And the median is the number that is the middle of all of the sales that are occurring. Now here's the difficult part with that. If there is more activity in the lower end of the sales, meaning that more homes are being bought and sold in a lower price point, that will drag that median number down. And what I found is that we tend to deal in averages and the median and the average are different. Usually the average is more. So I wanna kind of frame that out. I'm gonna give you the median. I'm not gonna speak about things I don't understand today. I am practicing real estate. I love this business. I love digging into numbers, but I wanna help lend some clarity to you on what you can expect to pay for a home in some of these areas. Now, again, this is going to be a range. This is Florida. There are very, very, very expensive estates on the coast here, 40, $50 million, insane, right? Um, for some people, other people, it's they can afford it, that's their thing. Um, but for the, the sake of this conversation, we're gonna base our, 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 our anchor in the median and the average, all right? So I wanted to get to that and I'm gonna break down, we're gonna start with the top five and then we're going to you know pop in some of the most popular cities because out, a lot of the times somebody will reach out to me, they'll say, you know what, I haven't decided yet if we're going to Jacksonville or Orlando or Tampa or Miami. It's the same thing that Kate and I said. So I think it's pretty important to start with that, but let's get right into these numbers. So number five on this list is gonna be the Destin, Fort Walton, Crestview area up in the Panhandle. This is a very popular area. They call us the Emerald Coast. There is some beautiful beaches up there. Y'all, they have incredibly gorgeous beaches. The, they call it the Emerald Coast for a reason. The, the water is emerald, green, blue, turquoise. It's stunning. It, it kind of looks like the, the, the Caribbean for all intents and purposes when you talk about Florida. Now, I, I don't want to get too far into the pros and cons today because that can be a whole nother video on itself, but there are some things to be aware of when you're up in the panhandle. It does get a little bit cooler there at night. It is, as far as we're concerned here in Florida, that's almost the South, okay? What I mean by that is like, they call it Florabama, literally. And um, it's, it's part of that entire region there. And it does get cool at night, especially in the winters. It can definitely get colder. The average temperatures during the winter don't get nearly as high. We're talking about the, the high 60s, which is a great temperature if you're coming from someplace cold, no doubt about it. They can still hit the 70s, make no mistake, and they can have 80 degree days as, as well. But it is pretty far north. Florida is a huge state, so keep that in perspective. The population in Destin is right around 287,000. And currently the median median home price is right around 441,000. That's the median, y'all. I want you to keep that in perspective. That's a three bedroom, two bath um, home, you know, a, a, an average home. And the, the average price is probably gonna be a little bit more than that. So keep that in mind. I don't sell in Destin. I'd be more than happy to connect you with great referral partners we have up in that area. But what I would expect based upon everything else in Florida is you're probably going to pay somewhere between 50,000 and $80,000 more on average for a home that's turnkey, meaning that it's probably renovated um, recently within the last five years in overall good condition, you know, just based upon the current market conditions. So keep that in perspective. Number four on the list is gonna be Cape Coral, Fort Myers area. Now, this area also has some gorgeous beaches. And you're gonna see a theme here, by the way, <laughs> when it comes to real estate prices, but gorgeous beaches here. Now, unfortunately, the Fort Myers, uh, Cape Coral area was decimated by Hurricane Ian last year. And they are recovering. They still have a long way to go, but y'all, it is not stopping people from going down there and you know buying a piece of their dream. After Ian, 
people were buying up real estate quickly. You know, even though it was in really rough shape, some people couldn't afford to fix their homes, insurance wasn't paying for all of it. There's a lot of things that went into that, but there were people who have been waiting with money who were ready to pounce. And guess what? Their market recovered very quickly. And I mean quickly, y'all. Uh, it's right around 760,000 in population. And right now the median homes are at around 445. Again, I got a great referral partner down there. It's just about two and a half hours to the south of me. And their average price point is gonna be in that 450 to 500,000 range for again, a move-in ready, you know, renovated or newer home. Obviously there's plenty of new construction um, here in Florida as well. So that's always an option. But when it comes to real estate in the Cape Coral area, that's what you should expect to pay. Number three on this list is going to be the Sarasota Bradenton Northport metropolitan area. And this is right in my backyard. We help people buy and sell here every day. It is a beautiful area. Again, Gulf Coast, keep that in mind. Um, a lot of this list is on the Gulf Coast and for good reason. I think people just prefer sunset. Trust me, there are plenty of people on the other side. We'll talk about that in a minute. But people just love Gulf Coast sunsets. And can you blame them? I mean, I can't, especially people from the North or the Midwest and also from the, from the West Coast. We get a lot of people moving from Washington and California, um, uh, Colorado starting to become more popular, Illinois and the Northeast has been becoming really popular as well. And for good reason, we're still a really good value here compared to some other areas in Florida. We're gonna get into those numbers, uh, number two and number one, you're gonna find out really quickly. We're right around 833,000 people people for the metro area for Sarasota, Bradenton, Northport. Um, and the median home price right now is right around 513,000. Now, again, ideal in reality, I always like to be honest with people. What we're seeing is more towards the 580 to 600 mark. You can absolutely still find a single family home in that, you know, um, 513 range, even in the, in the high fours, it's totally possible, but expect to put some love into it, some elbow grease. It might be neglected a little bit. Um, if you're looking for a newer home or something that has um, been recently renovated, you should expect to pay much closer to 600,000. So just keep that in perspective. So before we get into the number two metro area, if you're getting any value out of this video, please hit the like button down below. And if you know anyone who's considering buying down here and they could find this information useful, do not hesitate to share it with them. I'm sure they'd be greatly appreciative. So number two on our list today is none other than Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach area here. With 6.1 million residents, it's becoming the new financial district of the United States. It's unbelievable. I know people will argue about Florida. I get it, but I'm telling you right now, Miami is attracting money. It is. It is blowing up down there, y'all. Um, and it's busy, it's alive. There's a lot going on down in Miami. 6.1 million residents down there and the median sales price right now is $610,000 for a single family home. And let me tell you, uh, I have lots of agents in my referral network and none of them are telling me that that's the average, okay? So you're going to expect to pay more. What I'm hearing right now, again, this is you know from the agents right out of their mouth dealing on this on a day in day out basis, they're looking in that high six to mid sevens for the average home, y'all. So this is not the high rise. Again, you can spend millions on all of these coasts. Just keep that in perspective. But if you're going down there, buckle up because you're gonna need to have somewhere between roughly you know, high sixes to a million bucks just to get into a really nice neighborhood and with a an average home. I mean, this is real life, y'all. The closer you get to the beach, the more expensive it gets. So just keep that in perspective. The further away from the coast, you can definitely get some better bargains. You might be able to find something under that median price point of 610,000. Just keep that in mind. And this is at the time of this recording. And we're in June of 2023, about to roll into July. These numbers are subject to change at any time, but if you're looking at this right now, this is what you can expect to pay. And the moment you've all waited for, drum roll please, coming in at the most expensive median home price in the state of Florida, it is none other than Naples Marco Island. With 375,000 residents and glorious sunshine, beautiful white sandy beaches, this is a very attractive area and it has been drawing a lot of people for a very long time who want to retire in style. Naples is that spot, y'all. And the median single family home right now in Naples costs a whopping $810,000. And I gotta be honest with you, um, 
I tell people all the time, because I talk to agents in Naples, and you are just starting to sniff the lawn for that price. Um, if you're going down to Naples looking for a single family home, and it's been renovated, it's in a desirable area, you should expect to pay over 950, well into the million dollar range. And again, there is more expensive real estate if you wanna go down that direction. Of course, you can always get a condo or town home as well. But for the sake of this video, we were talking strictly about single family homes today. And 810,000 as the median is very, very expensive. And going down this list, you can start to see the, the vast differences between the price points. And that's something that I think you should keep in mind because I say these large numbers and you might be, well, Florida's out of, it's just out of my, it's never gonna happen. I, I can't achieve those uh, with the current prices. And, and honestly, do we see prices going down anytime soon? No. And I know you probably watch the gloom and doomers and you know, they're all about it, but y'all, prices on everything are continuing to rise. We still have 4% inflation. Um, we still have very expensive interest rates, which is holding people back from selling, which is making this whole thing more complicated. The spring home selling season never even really occurred in, in, in the United States. So these are all things that are weighing on the real estate market, but I wanna give you some perspective, right? We talked about the top five, but let's talk about areas that um, are more in line with the national average. Because right now, uh, the, the, the median home price for the United States is right around 390 so let's get you into some of those numbers, but let's talk about the gaps first. So you've got Naples coming in at 810, right? I'm gonna read off the list here. You got Miami coming in at 610. That's a $200,000 difference, and they are only about a two hour drive apart, by the way. Uh, you've got uh, Bradenton, Sarasota coming in at 513 on the median. You've got Cape Coral, Fort Myers coming in at 445. You've got Destin Beach up in the panhandle there coming in at 441. Orlando, which we didn't even talk about, which is one of the most popular, is coming in at 435. Now, Orlando's in the middle of the state. Um, if you're a beach person, Orlando is probably not gonna to, to make you the happiest. So look for other areas as well. But if you're a park person or you're into that lifestyle, Orlando's a great place to go check out. Port St. Lucie, which is where I mentioned earlier, which with our family was considering moving there on the Atlantic coast, which is essentially, if you were in Sarasota and to drive straight across, you'd almost hit Port St. Lucie. So keep that in mind. They're coming in at 415. So that's a good number there. Vero Beach, 412,000. Um, uh, and that was number eight. Number nine on the list is Tampa. Tampa comes in at uh, 406,000, almost 408,000 on this list. We're up four and a half percent year over year in our real estate values. We're still inexpensive and it's crazy to say that because when you look at the national average at, at 393, Tampa's just above that, but y'all, you can get near some of the most beautiful beaches in the world here. Clearwater Beach, St. Pete Beach, you've got uh, Anna Maria Island just to the south, uh, uh, Lido Key, Siesta Key, like there are some gorgeous beaches in the area here so don't sleep on tampa it's a great value jacksonville falls right behind us at the number 10 spot that one comes in at 393,000. so i don't want to go crazy on all the numbers i just want to give you some perspective nash jacksonville is right in line with the national home value average so you can still make Florida a reality. If you're considering that, if you're thinking about buying, selling, or relocating here in the area, do not hesitate to reach out in my team, right? We take care of the Tampa Bay, Sarasota. That's our backyard. I have a team here. We sell here every single day. But if you're looking in those other areas and you need to be introduced to a quality real estate professional, do not hesitate to reach out to me. All of my contact information is listed down below. I'd be more than happy to hear you. There, heck, there's even a Zoom link in there where you can schedule a time that is best for you. I hope this video video was valuable, go out and share it with somebody who's considering making the move. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.